We talked about the thousand schools of philosophy that emerged during the Warring States period. And once the Qin Emperor had consolidated rule, establishing China's first imperial system, his philosophy, called legalism, ruled the day. A philosophy of total domination through harsh repression. So it informed every aspect of society under Shi Huangdi. So his military success came through conscription, that's the forcible enlistment, of hundreds of thousands of peasants. He used an infantry, infantry soldier system that functioned as a kind of massive fighting machine instead of one based on skill. It was about raw numbers. And throughout his society, his, his policy of control rested on violent repression. So he implemented a system where if someone in your neighborhood committed a crime, the entire neighborhood received the punishment, right? This is insane. It's a recipe for paranoia. Shocking as that is, there were actually practical achievements from this culture of efficiency and standardization. For instance, he established a standardized currency, right? His banyang coins, along with standardized weights and measures. He also standardized the script and created a unified administrative structure. These all had lasting value for subsequent imperial dynasty. But his legalism would not carry the day long term. And we know that simply because we've looked at this painting that's made in the Qing dynasty, so more than a thousand years later, that is condemning the you know, showing the horror of his persecution of Confucian scholars. And in fact, it are it is Confucius, the thought of Confucius and his contemporary Lao Tzu that becomes the two great philosophies that emerge from the Warring States period that become the founding great um, philosophical spiritual traditions, value systems that carry on through China to this day. So I'm comparing these portraits, both made later than the actual living person, just as we saw with Buddha, right? So well after they've vanished from the face of the earth, but their thoughts are so important that here these portraits are suffused with a sense of respect, esteem, esteem, and a desire to portray their significance. It's interesting that Confucius here is shown wearing rather elegant, somewhat courtly garments and is graciously bowing with a very kind, warm-hearted expression on his face. And Lao Tzu is like this craggy old mountain man with amazing fingernails and um, eyebrows, as if he sort of left kind of elegant society and is interested in going back to the elemental reality. He's pointing both down to the earth and up to heaven or the sky. We'll see how apt those portrayals are.